Hi, it's Elder. In this video, I want to share with you my recommendation for the best value configuration for the new MacBook Pros. So I have used M1 MacBook Air for about a year and all I can say is that it is a very powerful, crazy powerful little machine. But of course, Apple just announced the new MacBook Pros, so this M1 Pro and M1 Max chips and these are of course out of this world. But for me personally, I'm going to stick this M1 MacBook Air for now, at least until I see the real world reviews and maybe the prices go down a bit. But if you are in the market right now, today, to pick up the new MacBook Pro, these are my recommendations for the best value configuration. All of the new MacBook Pros will have great new features like promotion display, much improved battery life, better speakers, better microphones, and of course, all of them will have the ports back, like HDMI port, MagSafe port, and even SD card slot. All of them will have the notch on top, this 1080p camera, and if this is what you want to experience, the new design, the new features, you can just get the 14 inch base model MacBook Pro. It will cost you $2,000, which is 200 more than the baseline MacBook Pro we had before. And in my opinion, this is kind of expensive for 14 inch MacBook. It will give you all of the great baseline features, but the chip inside this baseline model is not the standard level M1 Pro chip because it has the downgraded CPU performance and downgraded GPU performance. Both of these are not to the standard level of this chip, not what Apple showed on the stage right now. It is a little bit less powerful. Now, if you take this downgraded chip, GPU and CPU, even the charging brick, by the way, is a little bit like less powerful, but that's not that important. If you take this chip and level up the performance to the standard M1 Pro chip level, so 10 core CPU and 16 core GPU, this 14 inch MacBook Pro will cost you $2,300, which is just $200 less than the baseline 16 inch MacBook Pro. And the baseline 16 inch MacBook Pro has the M1 Pro standard level chip, which includes 10 core CPU and 16 core GPU. So basically for $200, you get much bigger display and much bigger battery life. Although 17 hours of video playback is sounding cool on the 14 inch, the 16 inch MacBook Pro has a whopping 21 hour battery life, the best ever on a MacBook. And in my opinion, the $200 difference is not big enough to justify not getting the bigger model. Of course, if you're not looking for the big and heavy MacBook Pro, for you, that's not even a discussion. You will just get the 14 inch MacBook Pro, you can upgrade it to the chip you want and you will be good enough. But if you want to get the best value option, in my opinion, the 16 inch baseline is much better option. Of course, if you have more budget and you want to spend more, you can upgrade either the RAM to 32 gigabytes or the SSD to one terabyte because let's be honest, for the professionals, five, 12 gigabytes will be a little bit small, I guess. I mean, I'm using M1 MacBook Air, this 500 gigabytes, and it is a little bit not very good for big projects, for editing lots of video projects at the same time. So if you can afford it, of course, maybe upgrade the SSD. If you don't like to use portable SSD drives, I think this is the good option for you. Well, if you have a lot of money and you just want to get the best, get both the RAM upgrade and the SSD upgrade. Maybe you run many, many apps at the same time. So for you, RAM will be the most important, obviously. Well, if you have a lot of money and you just want to get the best, you can max out the MacBook Pro and get the M1 Max chip. Well, this year it really sounds cool, max out to get the max cheap. Yeah, I mean, for me, that's just some, somewhere I will never go, I think, because this is my workflow. I do a lot of video editing, but most of the time I just want to build websites. And for me, the bigger display will be a bigger upgrade than the actual 
cheap if I jump from M1 Pro to M1 Max. For me, M1 Pro, the standard level, this 10 core CPU and 16 core GPU will be more than good enough. And I think that for 99% of people out there who are considering getting this new MacBook Pros, this will be the case. So the reason why this year the gap is not that big enough is because you can spec out the 14 inch MacBook Pro to be exactly the same as 16 inch MacBook Pro. And this is a big bonus for people, the big opportunity for people who don't like big laptops, maybe who connect them to the external displays when they're in the office and on the go, they don't want to carry this huge laptop. If you are this person for you, of course, 14 inch MacBook Pro, this the maxed out performance might be the best option. No questions asked. But if you are working from your laptop and you value the bigger screen and better battery life, I think that baseline 16 inch MacBook Pro is the choice for you if you want to get the best value for your money. So let me know in the comments below what you are excited about the most about this new Max and which configuration you will personally go for if you are in the market for the new MacBook Pro. Thank you for watching this video and I will talk to you in the next one.